Hi, this is Sandy. We are finishing up our mud section in the basics of watercolor. This video will concentrate on using the three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. It uh, doesn't matter what yellow, blue, or red you use because we're not really taking it to the next step. But what we're going to do is figure out how to not make mud using three colors and still putting a wash down on a big piece of paper. So once again, we're going to start with bubbles. Now, if you look at some of the videos that have been done on the colors, we stuck with three, the three basic colors from Daniel Smith. Um, I'm just going to use three colors and show you that you're not limited to just one color of blue or one color of red. Colors mix together all the time. So let's start with our bubbles. Um, this is just a pencil. I'm using Arches 140 pound paper. Arches paper is cotton based paper. And a lot of the paper that you buy in your craft stores is wood based, wood pulp paper. It absorbs the water differently. So it, unless you're trying this on the same thing I'm using, you may be getting different results and you may not like what you're getting. Sometimes it's worth just investing in it. Okay, dirty water. We don't want to mix our colors with dirty water. Clean water. All of our other bubbles were done wet on wet, meaning we wet the paper and we used wet color. We're going to continue using that the same way. The first one I'm going to do is make mud and explain to you how I made mud. Now mud is never anything ever anybody sets out to do, so this is kind of foreign to me. Um, mud just happens, and then you'll you'll wonder, what did I do here? Well, it's kind of nice to know what you did. So I've got a damp paper. I don't have puddles. I'm going to pick a blue. Any blue will work. And I'm picking blue, a red and a um, blue, red, and a yellow. Now I'm just dropping, but I'm not polka dotting. It's when we polka dot there's a problem. Okay, so blue is dropped in. Rinse your brush, get some clean water. I'm just going to a red. I mean, red is red, right? So let's go to... Let's go to this red. It's maybe kind of pink, but that's okay. Well, that's red. I can come out here and see that blue didn't go in very well. I didn't get enough color there. So I'm going to rinse my brush, get some clean water. I'm going to go back to that blue that I used because I didn't get enough color out here. You know, I just didn't like it. So that's number one. The first thing is I didn't know what that color was going to do. But now i got this little spot here, so I'm going to get it, fix it. That's my second problem. Don't try to fix it. When it's wet, you don't want to fix it. Now I'm just going to pick a yellow. Gee, I haven't used this one yellow yet for a while. So I'm going to, might as well use it. That's my problem. That will make mud faster than anything else. Now, I don't. I want to take care of all of these white spots. And did you see what I just did? I just made real mud because I went over here in this blue, and then I went over here. And by me mixing, I am making mud. I'm overworking. That was mud number one. Okay, well, I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to... Let it run because that's what I wanted it to do. We we talk about letting the watercolor run. Um, it's not running. Let's get some water right here. There we go. Now it's running. Ooh, let's run it this way. Look at that run. Once again, what am I doing? 
I'm overworking it. You know, I didn't know what that yellow was going to do with that red. It didn't make orange, that's for sure. So maybe the next time I want to use a yellow, a different color, I'll try out a little swatch so I know what my colors are going to do. Hmm, I cannot see in any blue over here. Let's go make that blue. Yeah, let's make that blue. Oh dear, oh dear. Now it's happening. Mud, I'm getting mud. I've lost the vibrancy of those colors. So what could I do? I could add, where's that color? Right here. Let's add it back. Let's make some, make it brighter. Well, I lost most of that yellow, so rinse my brush. I'm going to get some of that yellow back right here. Um, that yellow is not mixing well. Uh, but, so now I know, just leave it. Just leave it. But now I got a puddle there, so I'm going to take care of that puddle, and I'm going to go this way and take care of that puddle. I'm going to just let this dry. This is not what I wanted. I've decided that I know I can't. I can overmix this by tilting it and mixing it and mixing it, and it's it needs to stop. I need to just let it sit because I know how I get mud. Mud one ta taught me that. Mud two doubled it. So let's just leave it. We, we've got some vibrancy of the color. Not quite as much as I wanted, but it's there. Okay. This is the one where I am not going to make mud. I promise. I'm going to wet this down. Just getting all of it damp. Now, if you're using a different paper, even wetting down the paper is going to be different than wetting down the arches paper. Okay, I did some of this yellow. And really, it isn't the yellow isn't the problem. I could have used the other yellow. It's going to do the same thing. But I know what my yellow and this red is not going to make, and that's orange. So I'm going to rinse that brush out, get some clean water. I'm going to add a little more water, a little more water to the edge of that, just around the edges. Rinsing my brush out, I'm going to go to that red that I used. Now, if you get this too watery, not enough pigment, it's going to stay watery. So you've got to have a good pigment mix to it. But while I'm doing this, I want you to notice something. If I pull off, look at that bloom I get. Try it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mix this a little bit. Let the two colors mix. I don't want to let that one mix, but I can't do anything about that since I've got the paper connected. Okay, now I'm going to go to that blue that I used right there. And I'm going just on the outside of that bubble. Every time I pick up that brush, I'm getting one of those blooms. We're going to have to talk about how you paint without that happening. Because that's an important thing to learn. All right, I've rinsed my brush. Just going to let it work the color a little bit. To me, mud is mixing it and mixing it until all of the red is gone, all of the blue is gone, and you get nothing but colors that are overmixed. I could mix a color. Let's mix this blue that I had right here, right here, and get some clean water, get some of that yellow, 
put it out over here. Clean water, get some of that red and put it out over here. And I could mix it all together, just like this. And that is the color that I'm gonna get. That's gray. I'm not sure what color this is going to turn out to be, but it certainly isn't vibrant colors like this that's mixing. No matter what I do, if I add more color at this point, it's going to change the way it mixes. If I add water at this point, it's also changing the way it mixes, but it isn't clouding it with more color. So let's let this dry. And let's then talk about how we used three colors and didn't get mud. Okay, we're going to recap this. As you know, this is our third attempt to make mud. And uh, in week, the first week, or the first video, we did uh, two colors and we made mud. In the second video, we did three colors and we made mud. And then we talked about glazing on top of it and you still get to, you get to see the colors underneath it. And maybe the reasons you might wanna make mud itself. So this week, or this video, we did, we made mud and we used three colors again, but we used colors that we know make mud. These are all of the primary colors. It didn't matter which primary colors we used, just so long as it was a red, a blue, and a yellow. You can mix your paints. It doesn't matter what they are. You know, cadmium can be placed next to a, a, th a thalo, and um, uh, any pigments, will mix. So don't get stuck in a rut saying I've only can use cadmiums. Okay, let's look at this now. If we look at this one over here, we made mud, but yet we were able to keep some of our other colors. We got, this is a beautiful green over here. Um, and then we've got some purples down here. But you might want to wonder, what happened here? If you recall, when we did this, we had a puddle that settled in the center. That puddle of water dried at a different rate as this paint out here. And that resulted in this cauliflower. So what did we learn? We learned that if you don't keep the paper the same wetness, it's going to cause blossoms or cauliflowers. So we sort of got mud here. We got just too wet. Sometimes we get mud just adding colors because we don't know what to do next. That happens. So don't just keep adding colors. Okay, then we went over to this bubble and we kept them separate just as we did here, but we didn't keep them as wet. We told it when to mix. When we told it when to mix, we got this green, we got this purple. We never did get orange out of this color. So we know that the color I used mixed with this color yellow is not going to make orange. That's an important thing to understand. It's, you've got to know what your colors will do before you mix them. Then we talked about the difference between palette mixing, which is you put your colors on your palette and mix it, and letting the colors mix. I call it mud when I don't let my colors mix and I palette mix and it just looks dull, drab. It isn't an exciting color. I want to be able to see the colors being, that are making those colors. So what I did is I grabbed the blue and the red 
that I used and I mixed it on my palette, basically the same amounts. And then I painted it over here and I got this dull gray color. That's, ex that's what I expected to get. So I know that if I were to paint something and, and used my palette mixing, the colors would dull out. They wouldn't be exciting colors. Watercolor is made to mix together. And I think a lot of times we will mix it in our palette and we'll lose that vibrancy of the color underneath it. I'm going to go back to this color chart I did a long time ago. Just understanding what my colors would do when mixed together. This was all mixed on the palette. At the time, that's where my learning was. As time went on, I learned that I needed to know what the color would do if I let it mix. So I started on the back of these doing that. Uh, there was other learning going on here, and I'll continue that later. But do you see how many I haven't done? And um, that's because it wasn't the type of learning I needed now. So we'll go into that uh, more in depth in another video. But know what your colors are going to do. If you have to do it this way, do it this way. You're learning. You're not wasting paper. All right, so this is mud three. So now we've used three colors. I'm using the same colors as the bubbles. That was, um, I think it was lemon yellow. It was lemon yellow and ultramarine blue and fuchsia. You know, we've done washes and wet on wet washes, but now let's take it another step. Let's say we're doing a sunset and I'm going to use a pencil. Normally I don't do this. I just use a brush, but I want you to be able to see where my mind is going with this. I'm going to have well, I don't know. Let's let's not do water. Let's do uh, let's do mountains. And there's my hills, my rolling rolling hills. Okay, we'll do this another time. The bottom. What we're going to concentrate on is getting a sunset into the sky. And how do you do that? We know that by looking at our washes. If we let red, I mean not red, blue and yellow mix, we're getting um, we're getting green. There's no green in the sky in the sunset. So I've got to be careful. Now when I do my sunset, I know that my sun is going to be right about, let's make our sun right about here. Okay. And we're going to have the colors of sunset around the sun, but we don't want it to go around the sun because that's not the way it goes. It kind of goes in and out of the area. Okay, then we know that if you look up at the sky, the bluest part of the sky is directly above you. As it goes towards the horizon, it changes in intensity of blue. So I've got to remember that. My darkest blues will be up at the top. I can do a wet on wet. It's going to be hard to control. So I'm not going to do a wet on wet. I'm going to start with my sunset, my sun. And I've got yellow in my brush. And I'm just going in the sun no, if you look at the sun, you can't see the sun. But if you did, you wouldn't see all the same color of yellow. It would have a little bit of white in it. So I'm going to let my brush 
take some of that color out. I didn't like all of that color. I can do that. All I got to do to change this is add some water. Rinse my brush and take it out. I don't have to be stuck with what I've got. Okay, that's a good enough sun. Now that red that we had in our sky, I'm going to come over here and just grab some of it. And I'm going to let it run right there. Maybe some right there. I know that it's going to be around the sun. There's not going to be any red clear across. So it's not like I'm draw drawing a red stripe. I'm just going to let it go back and forth. Now, if you'll notice, my color is gone out of here. Rinsing it out, I'm going to get some clean water. And I'm going to just, in spots, go around the edges of that color. And I've got to be careful. I don't want to have that purple in the sky. So when I put my blue down, I'm going to give it some space. Got to go to my blue that I had, and that was ultramarine. Now I know what my colors are going to look like because I did a bubble. I know that it gives it purple. I don't really want that in my sky. All right, so I'm picking up some of that ultramarine, and I'm going to start up here. And I don't have to paint it all because, you know, there might be clouds. But I'm going to be careful if it touches that red. Okay. Not letting them mix yet. I'm controlling the mixture. I need a little bit more blue. Okay, I'm going to come over here on this side. Start it out with some blue. And if you'll notice, I'm, I'm running this brush the way of the horizon. I got this one a little bit more um, so there's not as many clouds. But I can fix that. I'll show you how to do that. Now, my, my red is getting pretty dry. And my brush was dry. So just rinsing it off, it didn't do anything. So I'm now I'm going to go in in those spaces like in our wash that were white and clean. I'm giving it some water. To telling it, it's okay to mix now. You're fine. You'll be fine. I might want to take some of this blue that I had there and put it up there. I can dip my brush in clean water. Notice me getting most of the water out here. And maybe I need a cloud right there. That looks good. Maybe you need a cloud over here too. I might even decide that's a little bit too dark. I can take some of that color out just by adding a little bit more water. But I've got to be careful because do you see what's happening over here? I'm getting blooms. That means that this is getting too dry for me to work on anymore. And it is definitely time to stop. Okay, I see though that this right here, my son, I want it to mix just a little. This is pretty dry, but I've just told it to go ahead and mix a little bit there. So I have done a sunset. As long as I don't keep dipping in like this and changing the ways of this sky, I can fix whatever's wrong here or whatever I see happening. 
the minute I start adding water to this, I'm going to end up with more blooms, more cauliflower, and more mud. You see how I got mud? But I can fix this. Just not now. So you do your sunset. Don't do the hills underneath it. We haven't gotten to that yet. But we did get a sunset that didn't turn green and it didn't turn orange. And it certainly is not brown. Then I decided, well, I'm going to take that mud three and I'm going to do a sunset or sun, yes, a sunset. I don't like the colors that I ended up with. I've learned an important thing. I knew here that I wasn't going to get a pretty orange. So at that point, I should have picked different colors, but I didn't. What I wanted you to learn is how to keep your colors separate on a wash so that they didn't turn into mud. We still have a blue sky. We still have a yellow sun. We still have a red sunset. At this point, this is a wash. I can put the hills in now and not worry about it touching this area here. It won't run. 